welcome back. It's Christina again with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw bug eyes, praying mantis eyes specifically, but um, bug eyes in general. Uh, it will apply to like bees and other things as well. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So let's get arting. So the eyes, what we're going to do, just making sure I'm double checking, I'm on the right layer. We're going to take our brush and we're going to go in two opposite directions, create, basically drawing in almost a crosshatch style, um, but creating that crisscross, you see that a lot in bug's eyes, it's a good detail to add. So right, choose one direction, we'll mirror it on the other side, and just because of how we sketch, it'll create the natural crosshatch of the eye. The only problem being is we're coming up to the edge instead of being able to nicely round it out, although I'm twisting it a little bit. Right, so I'm going to fill this in in shadow, um, completely with the eye, going in one direction, then I'll do it the other. So I'm going to get one direction, I'll be back uh, in just a moment. All right, um, so it's kind of how it looks. It's one direction, so now we're going to go in, the, in another direction, trying to make an X with it, so now it would be more this way, right? So same thing, I'm going to sketch it all the way in, but because um, we're going now in a different direction, it'll create that X-like pattern to the eyes, and when we highlight it, we'll do the same thing, mindful to create that X-like pattern with the eyes. But still that light pin pressure, it's brightening it up significantly because now I'm adding more strokes and I'm adding strokes on a different axis um, so it'll create a brighter look but all of this is that light pin pressure um, and you can kind of see what that's doing um, so I'm gonna do this on both sides um, and then I will be right back Now, I'm just going to fix some of the rough edges. So some of them go outside. Just debating on if I should worry about it. Some of them, though, are pretty extremely outside the others. And I need to make sure this tips off. Refining the lines as much as I can, uh, given how it's drawn. Right, making sure it's a cleaner edge than what it currently is. So just doing that creates a lot of texture. Just going to take that out because that's a little extreme. And I'm going to take that out because that's also a little extreme. Okay. Now there would be highlight here, right? So. Light starts coming from above and to the right. So first bit of highlight. I am putting a little bit more pin pressure, but not a lot. I don't want to disrupt how it's going to look. So first bit of highlight up and to the right. I'm blending it in. And we'll do it on that cross axis too. All edges are in shadow, so we just did the shadow, which means I don't have to worry about pushing to the edge anymore. I need to worry about making sure the highlight ends up in the right spot and that it looks rounded. Um, that's helpful when you're doing more lines instead of more pressure because the edges, you know, as naturally as we're pulling away with less pin pressure, pressure, just adding in more lines, we're not creating a thicker line, we're creating that nice tapered edge. All right, just bringing it down. Oh, that was a little much. Mm, yeah. It was already a bright line, that's why that built up a little quicker. It's okay to have some deviation, but sometimes it's a little much. <laughs> and then we'll do the same opposite way. Kind of already defined that edge, so. All right, so you get, you know, a nice highlight there. 
Now on this one it's going to be, right, this is more weighted this way, this one's weighted this way. So focusing on that highlight, not towards the edge of the eye over here, that would be slipping into shadow, but towards the inner part of the eye. Just like we're dealing with a ball stuck in an object, that's exactly how we're going to think about it and shadow it. But careful to leave. That might have been too much. It is stuck into the object itself, right? So there would be a bit of um, shadowing right against that, the edge where it's going into the uh, uh, head of the mantis. Otherwise, like a ball, as we bring it down. Being mindful, the reason we're doing this right, light source is above and to the right, so um, that's dictating the direction these highlights are. Tapering it off just like we did before. And then, once again, let's bring this a little bit more in. Going on that other edge, doing the same thing in an area now that we've defined. Adding in those extra lines to create the highlight. but not necessarily extra pin pressure because we won't need it. Just making sure that this is a cleaner edge, a smooth um, transition. So this should look nice and 3D-esque by the time we're done. And if it's not, we can make changes as we need to. All right, and tapering that off as we get to the edge of our highlighted section, but making sure it's nice and smooth. this in just a little bit and then running it off at the bottom yeah there we go okay now I am actually going to take some green which I kind of half decided on it's torn between making the eyes green or brown that's a prank mantis so it could be either um, I'm going to see what it looks like to add a little bit of green on top. Not much, but you know, just a little bit on some of this highlight. It'll make it more of a brownish green instead of just this solid brown. And potentially give it more of that kind of weird bug-like look that they have that bug's eyes can get. Dipping a little past the highlight, I'm also going to do it right against the head. Right, so we'll do just a little bit. Swoop. Right against the head. Greenness. And then on this side, and we'll do that crosshatch as well. So it's still this light pin pressure. I'm not putting a ton of pressure as I do this. But even though I've done the eyes in brown, this should give it that, you know, mantis look. Their eyes can be brown, so it's not so unusual to do that, but um, I feel like this will help temper that a bit, make it seem more praying mantis right but not pushing it to all the way to the edge so I'm still relegating it mostly to that highlight I'll push it in towards the body right sooner than I push it out towards the edge that edge is that goes into shadow this will just be another poignant way to do that and then we do that cross hatch same thing over here now we do that cross hatch help add to that illusion that their eyes have that texture to them. I'm just trying to balance them both out. Well, sometimes I get overzealous, too overzealous on one side and I have to balance it out. <laughs> That's why it's important to back away. Sometimes they don't notice. Now, um, last thing I'm actually going to do here is come in and use the elliptical maquis tool 
to erase out um, another eye. Just look what I've got here. I'm actually going to make a copy of all these later, so I'm going to do that by grabbing the layer, dragging it down. This is just to make sure if I don't like it, I can undo this easily. Although I could just hit undo. I'm going to do it this way anyway. I'm going to erase, erase, erase. And then I'm going to drag the selection. So I'm going to leave it on the elliptical marquee tool. Drag the selection to the other side, to the other eye where I've drawn this out. Let's see if I can line that up. And do the same thing. Race, race, race. And then, yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's looking at you. Um, I'm probably going to fix this little bit of a corner up. Checking to see if there's any other corners that need it, because this is looking a little rough. I'm going to do that by starting another layer. All right, so I just want to make sure this is nice and smooth. Can do some bending of that edge as I need to. I mean, I want it in shadow, but I um, don't want it to look too jagged. See, that looks much smoother. Likewise, up here, there's some of that happening too. I can manipulate some of these lines just a bit, right, to give them that edge. And then on the other side up to them. And I probably could leave this be, but I'm not going to. Yeah. There we go. And the last thing I forgot to do, I'm going to take this color and finish out the tips of his antenna. Following that same highlighting pattern, being mindful of the light source. Um, and I might take, we're gonna see how this looks. If I take a little bit of white, I can add just a little burst of highlight. Doesn't have to be much. Just along that axis, right? I do the cross hatch. Doesn't have to be much. Probably should have done this before I before I raced out the people, but that's okay. Same thing on both sides, not much, just enough pushing into the eye just that little bit, without actually pushing into the eye, pushing into the pupil. And then not making up your own line just because you don't want to draw the other one. All right, so same thing. It's not much. I'm, again, really holding back my pin pressure here. Being careful by the eye. All right, that gives it just that little bit of extra. So it's not a lot, but it certainly is enough. And then I'm just going to snip some of the white I pushed too much. Okay. There we go. All right, so that is how you draw, but guys, I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done. I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.